Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, Mira Sorvino, season three of Startup. Yes. Tell me all about season three. Uh, season three is a very interesting moment for the characters that if you've been following the show, you've obviously come to know and love. I am not one of the ones you will love. You will probably hate me because I come in to mess things up for them, kind of. I'm a, an NSA agent putting pressure on all the different members of the cast to try and get them to work with me to open up the system so we can find out about a terrorist attack that's supposed to be happening on American soil. And obviously their, you know, code is agnosticism. They, you know, it's, it's supposed to be anonymous. No one is ever supposed to be able to share anything with the government. I'm saying they have to because we have to save lives and I'm using every trick in the book to pry and manipulate all of them. I'm not asking you to be a spy. I'm asking you to be you. Kindest, prettiest version of you basically threaten all of them in order to get what I want. And I'm a very, very strange character. I'm like kind of on the spectrum, although whether that's from birth or because of kind of child abuse, it's sort of up in the air. Very lonely, somewhat pill adult, but also oddly, she has like an odd soft spot for Omara's character, um, Izzy. And I think I see in her like a young me, although I don't think she sees me as an old her. I think she hates me, but. <laughs> It's, it's really a cool, interesting, weird character. She's very odd, like she, you know, does stuff with her, like, you know, before she can eat something, she has like a ritual about how she sets up the paper, the wrapper, she undoes it. Like everything has to follow these like rules for her so she can feel safe. And she's very strong in her job, but everywhere else in her life, she's really desolate and lonely. What do you think about the streaming world we're in right now? I grew up, there were three networks, midnight talk shows, and you were in bed. It's a whole different world now. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of choice out there, so that's why everybody has to up their game. And I think this is one of the strongest offerings out there. I think the acting of my fellow cast members is extraordinary. Like, they are all amazing. And Ben Kitai's um, writing is so incredible. He's such a great writer, and he explores such interesting human dilemmas. And it's kind of like all their sins are coming home to roost. You know, that agnosticism, that a morality of the business flourishing even if it causes other people to suffer because crimes are being committed through it. All of them suffer personally because they've allowed this to happen, you know? Um, it's really interesting. We're fresh off the Emmys, Mrs. Maisel cleaned up. So many really powerful female-driven shows are dominating television right now. What do you think about these incredibly just in empowered female characters we're seeing both in television and film. I think it's great, obviously. I mean, I think we're, you know, we're half the world, so half the story should be about us. And directing and producing them as well. And there was a great, a great op-ed written the other day about how there are a tremendous number of female directors out there, veteran female directors who need to be put to work. You know, there's not a dearth of female directors, there's a dearth of opportunities for female directors. And so to take those women who've already made their mark within the industry, but may not be be giving, being given the opportunities right now how they need to be employed.